Hi guys, guess what we're doing? Boiling hot day, let's dress up in a bee suit. Yeah, so it makes it even hotter, but it has to be done, so um, off we go, see the bees, see how they're doing, hopefully get some honey back. Okay, here we are, and just have a quick look, see what we're dealing with. So this hive here, I think, is being robbed. Um, I should have moved it all out, but hey-ho, these guys all look fairly quiet this morning. What's going on in this one? These two, a bit of activity. This one's, yeah, a little bit going on. And, yeah, these two, a bit of activity as well. So, let's open one up and have a look. And we'll start with the one we want to get some honey out of. Which is this one. Look, Look dead wax moth. Not good. Well, it's good that's dead. It's better that it's dead, yeah. <laughs> nice and quiet, nice and gentle. Here we go, non agitated bees. Loving it. So. All building it out, ready to take some honey. I'll get my glamour assistant to hold, assistant to hold it. Cool. What we'll do is we'll just then again, they're starting to fill it with honey, as you can see. And they're eerily quiet this morning. I have no idea why. Trick us. This is heavy. And nearly fully capped with honey, only on one side though. We're only going to take them when they're fully capped both sides. Ooh. Yeah, again, half capped. This is just honey they're putting in there, and the same again. Yeah. Just do one frame at a time, guys. <laughs> yeah, come on guys, just finish the frame off and then we'll start the next one, eh? Yeah, this one here again, they're building the wax out and then capping it off, filling it with honey and then capping it off. Really quiet. It does speak too early. Again, doing a good job. Right, darling, I'll put it all back up. Go on. Lots and lots on the side, look. It's really strange. Don't know why that should be. It looks like they've had a bit of damage with heat. We'll keep that one back there and we'll put this one. <coughs> back there, it looks like this side may have melted. Take this, which is essentially now a honey super off. Oh. Just stuck down very well, and it weighs about 10 kilos. Oh, god, yeah, definitely. <laughs> about 10 kilos of honey in there. This is our queen separator. Basically stops the queen, obviously, laying up above where she shouldn't be. It's trying to force these guys to, to put all their honey upstairs, all their stores. I suspect they haven't done that because this here, look. <laughs> Lots of stores, pollen and nectar and honey on both sides. Again, glamorous assistant 
Click on that. Yep. So, again, more stores and some Maybe brood. A little bit of brood, and then cleaning it out looks like some more brood. And lots of nectar and pollen, but lots of clean cells here, and I'm trying to see if there's eggs in the bottom, get it in the sun. Can't see any. Mind you, I haven't got my glasses on. <laughs> Very clean cells, but I can't see eggs in the bottom, so they're ready for the queen to lay in. What have we here? Wax moth that they've killed. It's a nice strong hive, isn't it? A very strong hive, so they don't tend to get a lot of problems. Again, all supplies, not a lot of brood. Same again. A little bit of brood on that one. Tiny little bit of brood here, and look, play yeah. cups. Tiny little bit of brood there. I'm not sure if these guys are too happy with their queen, you know. Well, the queen's not laying very much. That's, uh, that's a bit better. A bit of brood there. I haven't seen the queen yet. Then we're only quickly going through them. Tiny amounts of brood though, worryingly small. Oh, look at you fella. No, I have an inkling the Queen's on this frame. But, no, because it's a food frame. Yeah, um, I don't know guys, what do you think? Hardly any brood at all, most of it's old brood, there's no new brood at all. Uh, these cells are all cleaned out on here, a bit of honey mm -hmm. here. These are all cleaned out, so I don't know whether they're... I don't know what's going on, but no, this is all honey, and honey and then next to it, well, new honey uncapped. To me, I wouldn't have said there's a queen in there now. Just a bit worrying. So, and yeah, if any of you guys know what we should do about that, please let us know. You want to check the landing board as well? <coughs> Yeah, check the landing board in behind it here for wax moth and stuff and it's all fine. Too happy with that. Right, on to the next one. Okay, bit of bad news here guys. Um, I'll just try and show you. We know it's been very, very hot. Look what's happened. The uh, honey super has just melted out, I'm afraid. Jeez. The outside one's got it worse, I think. But then some of these in here. Yeah. This is just way, way too hot. And, um, yeah, not good at all. <sighs> so, 
So the ones in the centre aren't bad. Obviously no honey because they've been busy trying to cool themselves down, I should imagine. This one here is... taking honey somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So it's really bad. Really bad. Mm. Repairable. And again, not the best, but... So I put some honey supers down with us because I was expecting to get these full of honey out of there. But um, yeah, these guys have obviously been busy sorting themselves out. We'll have a look deeper down. Yeah. So the honey super now is probably a waste of time because these guys would have. Uh, Let's just hope this is okay in here. Ah, so they've got honey. They've <laughs> they've moved some of the honey downstairs. Then they've got a bit here. Um, just leave that there, which we can. That's all right, man. Yeah. Okay. You got it. Yeah. So, yeah, this is heavy. A lot of stores in here, a bit of honey over the top, uh, nectar and pollen stored in here. I'm reluctant to put that back on the outside, but there's no brood in it, so that'll be fine. Again, stores. <coughs> now we got brood. See the little grub? So it's Fairly fresh brood. Brood on here. And then lots and they got lots of supplies, but that's probably fairly obvious because it's all melted down <laughs> over them. Yeah, scattered brood around on every one of these frames. But that's a good sign because um, we lost the queen in this hive. Uh, as you can see, there's a new queen cell here, and one here which is hatched out, so whether we have a young queen here now, I can't see one yet, so that's three brood, yeah again, lots of supplies, with a bit of wax moth problems by the look of it. We found four dead ones in the roof, in the top, so we've got something in here laying anyway, which is good. Again, they got lots and lots of supplies. I don't know whether to leave. Uh, I could do with putting a built out. Oh, that's a good one. Supplies, but we've got lots of empty cells here. Might turn that one around near the center, and this one again has <laughs> a bit of honey on it. Look at that. This hasn't melted, this was this frame's always been like this. And the outside frame, they're just starting to build out, so they're making room, which is good. But uh, I think we'll take that supers off the top now because um, after that disaster, these guys aren't going to. Don't know whether to um Yeah there's plenty of room there to lay in and there's so much food so what do you think Andrew? Just put leave Yeah, the... just leave it as yeah. take the super off and then we'll have to take the supers up and um repair hot repair them. We 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 wax them. Re wax them and then uh, Let's see. Let's see if I don't need to go back home. So, yeah. Not good at all. Well, just because it's been just the heat, it's been a nightmare. Yeah. And these guys are in the 
quite a good shade here as well, this, the tree, but obviously yeah. not enough. So. Right. Well, this is the one we've took the honey supers off, all melted, uh, not good at all. The one next to it, I thought we'd have a similar issue. Um, we have one frame on the end of honey, well, not honey, but uh, one frame of wax built out which is melted so I've put that back in the box and this is a new built out frame that I've uh, brought down with us so we're looking at the centre ones here I'm just starting to put honey in these yeah that one and this is fully built out but just starting to put honey in here so they're starting to put honey upstairs which is a good thing last time I, I had done an inspection on this hive I had to walk away because they were like extremely aggressive but uh, they seem to have been enough bees to fan the hive and keep it cool unlike this one so um, we'll see we'll see what's happened here but it doesn't really matter there's obviously a queen and you can never see a queen when I'm here no it's Angie's fault look at this <coughs> look at the brood there so it looks like we've got a lot of brood either side and they're starting to fill out the middle because they, the two middle cells here are really cleaned out in the middle so it's all good again this look you've got fresh brood here they're really quiet today which is good not like angry bees and delve into the depths. We find a few there, uh, just built out comb. That there because it's easy. And here we go. This is weird. So <laughs> honey and uh, empty cells ready to be laid in so that's really good. Honey here. Um, but these are mostly filling with honey. Yeah, put that back as it came out. Lots of honey. Lots of honey, I can understand this. So this, you've got honey below, brood in the middle and honey above. <laughs> um, yeah, see this is nearly filled with honey. I'm starting to cap all this off. And again, lots of fresh honey in here. I can't tip it up too much because it all to show you because it'll all run out. But so that's four frames nearly full of honey, um, and now an empty frame, completely just built out comb. We're building it out actually. So hopefully ready to be laid in, and they move all the honey upwards. Well, there you go. Interesting. So we're back from the bees now and as you can see they've had they've been having a real hard time with the heat as well as we have uh, so we've lost several thousand bees I think but that's you know that's a normal they up and down their populations um, but uh, we've lost a lot of honey as well um, I think we you know where we lost where all the the uh, supers have melted there and, and in a few of the other hives which we didn't see they've melted as well so we've probably lost I don't know five or six kilos of honey so far um, with this heat wave and it's still ongoing so I've, uh, I've, I've added a few bits and pieces just to make it better for them as you can see every hive has insulation in the top but uh, obviously not enough so I'm going to try and do a bit more I'm going to show you what I've done so I've come down in uh, shorts and t-shirt probably not the wisest thing to do after just stirring up all the bees but um, they seem fairly good. I'll show you what I've done. So with the hives that the worst affected, they're the ones that get the s most of the worst sun. Uh, with this one, this one, and these two. So I put some extra insulation on them, hanging out over the front, so they get a bit of uh, insulate from the sun as well. Um, and just temporarily put a big oh, oh it's okay, big lump of granite on. Um, and I'm just looking where the sun is now. I may get some more 
later on and do these three as well. So they're all done then. Just extra insulation and an extra bit of shade for them. And um, I think we'll start the process of... Uh, these guys are mostly okay here. But what I'm going to do is clear this area. And we'll start moving the, uh, the beehives from here. You can only move them about a foot a day. And we'll slowly move them across until they get into this area. So the worst part of the day they'll be shaded. And I'll show you that area from another angle. Yeah, so you can see they're behind here. So what I could do is clear all this away, this area here, yeah, and um, put new plinths down for all of them, and then we could put all the hives in here, and they'll be in the shade for the worst part of the day, which I think is the best thing we could do for them. So that's what we're going to do. So here are the bees from another angle. As you can see, we've still got running water. You can probably see all the bees coming down. And Drinking the water, taking it away, taking it back to the hive. But yeah, now these guys are the worst part of the day. Have some shade, I think. Yeah, the other hives are going to do the same with, because this one now has got good shade on. They all have, so... Uh... Oh, yeah, and I'm getting buzzed, so I'll go. Because um, shorts and t-shirt are probably the best. Okay everyone, so I uh, spoke about it before, I want to show you all about the Forstner bit. This is what we use to, to make a hole for this bit to go into for your kitchen doors. Everyone's seen them worldwide, they're all the same. I've marked them, um, I've marked them so there's a 35mm, uh, basically this circle is 35mm on the, on the hinge, so I've marked the point 20mm in to the centre on both of them and I've marked them to match roughly where they were on the old cabinet yeah so you just take the point if you're forcing a bit to the centre there and then you can check if it, that's not quite deep enough because this piece should be flush to the bottom yeah so we do a little bit more a bit warm now, I think. Everything's very warm at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, so that so that your the back of the bit is flush with the top of the timber, and then your hinge fits beautifully. Two screws, job done. Don't make this mistake. It doesn't matter for me because I'm cladding it, but this is 15. I should be drilling. Uh, 18 or 20 mil thick doors, yeah, because what's happened is the, the bit, the tip of the bit has come through. So I've got a little hole, um, but that's irrelevant for me. But I'm saying I shouldn't be using this as doors anyway, but I am because it's all I got. And it's being clad. And it's being clad, yeah. So just uh, fit the hinges to the doors, make sure. Um, it's not like that or like that. It needs to be 90 degrees to the door. You should technically screw, uh, drill to pilot holes here and here, but that's why you should drill pilot holes. <laughs> you should drill pilot holes, but I'm not going to. Three screws in the middle of the hole. Simple. Make sure they're 90 again. Make sure the screw is in either your pilot hole or the centre of the, the hole here. Job done. So this would be like your DIY, right? your DIY. Uh, doors, cabinet that you put together yourself at home, but I've just made my own hinges, you know, the hinge holes with the forcing of it, basically. Okay, <laughs> because the, uh, the, these are the clip-on type of, must clip these on first, yeah? I'll show you what I mean. So they, imagine this is mounted to the, to the cupboard, they actually just clip on, and there's a little thing to release them here. 
Uh, so that is in a specific place. So those adjustable, they're, they're set to the centre basically. So you need to clip them on first to mark the holes where you're going to drill your mounting brackets to the cabinet with. Yeah? And what I like to do as well, if this is going to be clad afterwards, see I have a 20 mil gap here. And I'd just like to pick something to give me a bit of space off the floor. So I can half that gap by using this spanner. So what I'll do is use the spanner there so I've got half the gap there and there. It gives me plenty of room. What they call wiggle room, yeah? And then I know where my brackets are going to fit on the on the face of the cover, yeah? So as simple as that. The panting you can hear is <laughs> this is just the top of his head at the back. He sat, on, he sat on my foot to make sure I don't escape. Also, you need to make sure where your cabinet fits is actually where you want it to be. Hang on. So, I want the door to sit there. I've got my spacing. Uh, so, guys, once your hinge is fitted, it'll be like this. Uh, with your, your brackets and mount onto the cabinet, close them both and measure the distance from the inside of the door to the centre of your uh, bracket here, yeah, which is to me 35 mil, yeah. Doesn't have to be that accurate because you've got a bit of adjustment on both of these, but it's 35 mil. So what you need to do then. It's mark a line where they're going to fit here at 35 mil. Yeah. So the way I would do it is just there and 35 mil there. Just so happens to be where the old ones came off. <laughs> so that's to ensure that when you then screw it with your little spacer underneath, yeah, that you screw it on 35 mil. Which isn't necessarily this, uh, if you can see there, there's a gap, yeah? If you put it tight up against there, it's more than that. So you need that little gap for the door to open and close. So, 35 mils, make sure you're on that line and make sure you've got your space underneath. And then you can drill your pilot, I would advise drilling a pilot hole first. Right, 35 mil in your pilot hole, centre. Okay, same with the top one. Make sure you're in the 35mm centre of that hole. And with these as well, make sure because you've got a bit of up and down adjustment, make sure you're in the centre so you can adjust it up or down, whatever you want. Yeah? So basically, there we go. One working door. Which then I can clad with whatever you like, um, and the little holes with the fortune bits coming through don't really matter. That's a cocktail cabinet all clad. Um, yeah, it does need a bit of a tidy up. There. So, uh, some of the uh, more observant of you may have noticed, I've got the new um, wooden top for it. It's, it's a solid piece, it's one single piece of Douglas fir. Uh, it's about two inches thick and uh, I'm just going to take it away and make it look a bit more pretty. There are a few uh, cracks running down the grain and a few knot holes, one, two knot holes in the whole thing. Um, and then this edge needs cleaning up, so I'll go and do that and refit it. So there we go, all fitted, trim done, trim, uh, so all fitted. Uh, planed off a bit and sanded, uh, so it's all looking in a similar colour now. The next thing to do is handles of some description and um, paint it, uh, sorry, seal it with some form of sealer, oil or something like that. There we go. Okay, just uh, quickly show you how to draw a circle with a stick and a, and a screw and a nail. So. Uh, measure the radius that you want on, on your piece of scrap um, wood. 
So I'm going to do. I'm making this round for the dartboard. So I need uh, I need a circle about dartboard size. So I'm going to take the centre of the screw or nail. And I know if the dartboard is 18 inches across or uh, 460 mil ish. So I'm going to mark it at nine inches, which is the radius halfway from the, well from the centre to the outside. Yeah. Then what I'm going to do is quite simply cut it off. Right, that way. <laughs> and then all we need to do <coughs> get as close to the edge as we can so we don't have much waste. Screw your piece of wood in. So from there to there is nine inches. Get your pencil on the end. You know that circle is 18 inches across. Ta da! It's a little bit under, but that's what I wanted it a little bit under to go. Oh, of course. Yeah. So, see? Now I'm going to make a dartboard. Quickly outside because it's uh, probably. I'll get a thermometer and show you how hot stuff gets here in a minute. I'm going to cut this circle out for the dog. Like I said, just to give you some idea of how hot stuff gets here in the sun. This is our uh, will be a trailer car. <laughs> um, so, you know, cars get pretty hot inside. I'll just show you in uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit how hot this is. The side of that is 62 degrees centigrade. That's 143 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, black metal is about the worst. So this on the front of the lawnmower is currently 60, 68 degrees. Yeah. Nice drop now. I don't know why it's... 68.7 there, which is 153 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, fairly warm. We wouldn't have to sit on the seat then, would you? No, it's about the same, I should imagine. <laughs> Can't be right. I can't be right. The seat's showing seventy. Look, <laughs> seventy-seven degrees, which is one hundred and sixty-seven. Wow! Ooh. Yeah, that's warm. Okay, so last you saw, I was making the uh, surround for the dartboard, and you know, I wanted to make it individual. I wanted to make it with uh, the timber we had available, which is cheap. And I'll give it a little bit of a 70s vibe, uh, a bit of a rustic looking thing, and also theme it around the main thing we see in Portugal this time of year. So there you go, uh, sort of sun themed rustic wood uh, dartboard surround. The reason we need a surround is um, sometimes. People may miss the board. I don't want it going into the wall. Not because of damage to the wall, because it will uh, damage the darts. So, yeah, there we go. I like it. Um, might have a game of darts now. Oh, before I do that, I uh, fitted the new light to the shade as well. So we've got a double filament LED bulbs in there, 36 watt in total. 
and uh, it gives some good light, really good light coming from the sides. So it, although the main light is going to be focused on the table, which it is, also we get some decent ambient light coming from the side there. So it's, yeah, it's working out really well. All I've got to do now is paint everything, finish things off and uh, then I can start on the pool table. Hi everyone, so as you know I am a bit concerned about the uh, water levels in the tank. They don't seem to have dropped much more than about the, the, the foot mark, maybe 300 mil, maybe 350 mil. But um, I think it's due to the pipe from the tank to the intermediate hole being blocked or something. Uh, it's, it's not a new pipe, I don't know what condition it's in but I know it, it's got a few leaks. So um, I'm going to go and rod it. don't know if you can see this, but uh, just here, all these uh, roots have come out and you can see the, hang on, let's see if I can get in there without falling in. If you can see here, there is a flow of muddy, murky water starting to come in again now. So I, I found two more rods, so I'll put two more rods on and see if they come out this end. So as you can see, the rods have come through. All I've got to try and do is reach that and uh, pull the rest through. So as you can see I've got the other end of the pipe um, and I'm going to just pull the rest of it out. So it's cleared them all the way through now, it's pushed those roots on that you saw earlier. And I'd just like you to have a look at what comes out of the pipe because it's very shallow so it silts up. It wasn't installed completely correctly when you know, originally, but there you go. So that's now hopefully giving it a new flow. Yeah, you can see the dirty water now flowing out. So it's because the flows have slowed down and um, it's not self cleaning, if you know what I mean. You know, the faster the flow, the, the more or the better it cleans itself. So I'll take all these apart now back indoors because everything's best out of the sun. So back up to the kitchen. We'll see what Andrew's doing. What are you doing? Perkling. We're going to be making a gazpacho. Oh lovely. I like to do that. Can I do that? Yeah because you're better at it than me. Okay. So yeah, let's get on with it. Okay. Okay, my turn in the kitchen. Eh? Something uh, that is close to my heart because it's simple, a bit like me. Uh, what we're going to do is a, just take that end off, a gazpacho. I'll show you the ingredients, really simple, but what I've, I've cheated a bit. So we have some frozen tomatoes of various colours, some green ones, they're all ripe, but green ones, uh, red ones and yellow ones, but mostly red-ish. Yeah, so there's like three or four um, full tomatoes worth, yeah? A couple more to make that up. So really you need six tomatoes. You need a red bell pepper, a six inch length of cucumber, 150 mil, a couple of cloves of garlic, and a small onion, yeah? Now then, this is where I and a loaf of bread, or a small roll, bap thing. So this is my substitute for sherry vinegar. So you need three, three tablespoons of sherry vinegar. Uh, I'm using Shaoxing wine and apple cider vinegar, yeah? Um, but you know, this is only because that's all I have. A bit like um, I should have used a red onion, but I don't have one, etc., etc. And three tablespoons of olive oil. 
and then salt and pepper to taste and if you want to maybe a, a teaspoon of ground cumin which I quite like to add. So here goes, this is a really tricky recipe guide no, sorry. it's really easy. Okay so you get your bowl, tomatoes, your other tomatoes, I just basically quarter them yeah, everything goes in the same bowl. Your onion again, just quarter it. Garlic cloves, oh, a little bit of skin. Right? Garlic cloves. Now then, this is where you can suit the recipe to your needs. So if you want to make a red gazpacho, use obviously red tomatoes, a red onion, and a red pepper. And if you don't want the green in it, because you prefer red gazpacho, you don't really want green. So what I do is just peel the cucumber, peel the green off the cucumber, yeah? So that's like it makes it then almost white. So it's not going to affect the colour. And I find the red gazpacho slightly more... Uh, how can I say this? Well, they all taste different. So I do a red one. They've all got cucumber in, yeah? But to change the... So cucumber... To change the flavour of your gazpacho, uh, what you can do is have what we've done, what I've done before, is you make a green one. So you use the green, the whole cucumber with the green bits. You use green tomatoes. We had tiger tomatoes last year. Red uh, green zebra. Okay, they were they were green zebra tomatoes yeah. last year, not tiger ones. Uh, we have, uh, so green tomatoes, which are ripe, a green pepper, yeah, and um, you can't get green onions, but a nice white onion. So then your gazpacho turns out green. Um, I did a yellow one as well. Um, for the yellow one, obviously yellow tomatoes, which are for all the, the little tiny ones, the ildi tomatoes. A yellow pepper and uh, again a white onion in a mix of gazpacho yellow. But the yellow gazpacho is, very, is quite sweet because of the, uh, the yellow peppers generally sweeter and the yellow tomatoes are definitely sweeter because they're all little cherry tomatoes but it makes a difference to how you like it so it's worth experimenting with or well, you don't really need to follow any of that and you can do a gazpacho to just chuck anything in it but, so all the ingredients in here uh, apart from the pepper which I've got to do now and just um, you want to cut out these the white bits inside because they can be a bit bitter Don't mind about the seeds. And again, just, just cut your pepper up into delicate little chunks. Delicate little chunks. Just like my husband. <laughs> Last teaspoon. So I'm substituting three tablespoons of sherry vinegar, yeah? So that'll be like one, two of them, and uh, a bit of that. That this will get this. Will... Oh, I love this stuff. Shellshin wine gives it that sherry flavour anyway. And uh, three tablespoons of olive oil, or more if you really fancy. It. That's, that's three-ish. Maybe a bit more. <coughs> and there we go. Salt and pepper taste. A lot of people don't like black pepper. I love it. We love it. So we're having more to taste. And again salt. And cumin. And I like to add A nice heaped teaspoon of ground cumin. And there you go, that's your gazpacho. Bit difficult to eat like that though. So, what I'll do is put some funky music over what I'm doing now. So, 
you can uh, then blitz it up to whatever you like. So if you want it really smooth, uh, which we we like it a bit um, gnarly, a bit more grainy, if you like. So so this is the consistency. We like it to a few little lumps in it, but you can you can blend it until it's really smooth. But it's probably better like this. So give it a little taste. It's so good. So the bread. Yeah, the bread will give it a little bit more texture. Um, so, if you go this way. The camera one is getting in my way. So again, you'll need to reduce the size of your bread. So this needs to go in the mix, yeah? But, make sure you bury them all. And what I like to do now, because gazpacho should be served mm, as cold as possible. So what I like to do now is let this bread soak in all the juices in there, in the freezer for about 20 minutes, so we're going to do that. So there we go, 20 minutes or so in the freezer. And as you can see now these the bready bits are put in, which is just to add texture to the dish. They're all nice and soft, yeah? So now we'll now blitz up, lovely. Let's do that in a sec. So there we go, the addition of the bread gives ju just gives it a nice grainy texture really and thickens it up a bit and uh, makes it more substantial. More substantial. And that's it. Mm. In the summer here I could eat this all the time. It's just fantastic. Mm. And a little bit of cumin makes all the difference. So this is a red gazpacho. You can serve this with... Um, very often served in Spain with crumbled boiled egg yolks, yeah? Uh, so I don't know whether with a basil leaf or something like that, but um, mm. get it down, yeah, loving it. So that's it from us for this Tuesday, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, we're just going to settle down and have some Coke and iced tea. Why not? Yes, it's quite warm at the moment still. Yeah. Um, thanks for your likes again, thanks for your super thanks, and thanks for your subscribes. And don't forget, bring that little notification bell, ding, ding. and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Which, um, yeah, it still probably will be hot as well. It'll probably be hot then as well. <laughs> thanks for watching, guys, and see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.